absolute value functions. Uh, you all remember the absolute value function. Uh, you've used it in the past. It's uh, the absolute value of x is an x with these two vertical lines, one to the left and one to the right of that variable. Um, what that means is that absolute value will make any value that you put into it turn positive. Okay. Now, I put over to the side uh, what absolute value represents if it's a piecewise function, just because we just got done talking about piecewise functions. So basically, any value that's positive comes out as positive. Zero is zero. And if you have anything smaller than that, you take the opposite of it. And this one was kind of confusing to me in the past, but let's say negative two is less than zero, so then the opposite of negative two spits out a positive two. So it basically makes every number positive. So like for example, the absolute value of negative three is gonna work out to be three. Uh, let's say I've got some operation in it, so like negative three minus five. You treat the absolute value kind of like a parentheses where you take the absolute value of all the operations on the inside, so absolute value of negative eight. Make sure you subtract first, so then the absolute value of negative eight turns out to be positive eight. So there we go. That is your absolute value function. Um, so parent functions, uh, we'll use this concept quite a bit um, for sure in the second semester and I think a little bit here in a couple units when we talk about parabolas again. But parent function is basically the idea is you got this set basic function. Okay, so I'll put in values for x, negatives are okay, zero is okay, one's okay, two is okay. I'll take the absolute value of those and I get two, one, zero, one, and two. So as I plot those ordered pairs, those are my y values. I'll go to the left two and up two, to the right one, up one, zero, zero, one, one, two, two. Okay, now domain is all my x, and x is all real numbers. And that's because I got the plug in negatives, they worked out, zero worked out, one worked out, or positive ones worked out as well. Range, I kind of look at the graph, and I look at my graph is above here, this x-axis. So my range is actually, y is greater than or equal to zero. So one showed up in my table here for y's, two did, three would, four would, every positive number, and zero included. So that's how I came up with that range. Well, what we're gonna do is we are going to translate. We're gonna make that graph change. Um, it's going to be the same table, so every single time we're going to have an absolute value function, I'm going to go off to the side, I'm going to put these canned negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, 2, 1, 0, 1, and 2. How the graph changes is I'm going to change the vertex, that bottom most point. Right now my vertex is at 0, 0, but if I put a number in here for H and a number here for K, I get a different vertex. Um, this a value, if it's bigger than zero, that v is going to open up like it did above. If it's a negative number, it's below zero, it's going to open down. Um, if that a value is a uh, fraction, basically less than one, so like one half or one third or even like two thirds, those are all going to make the graph wider. If a is a whole number that's bigger than one, so like 1.5, 2, 5, 10, they're going to make it narrower. Now, the branches have slopes. They're basically the a value and the negative a value, but I don't like this idea because a is going to show up a lot in different graphs. It's just going to change into like this number that does all the things that I listed above, like wider, narrower, and which way it opens. It doesn't necessarily have slope when it's got a curve to it. So here we go. Right above there, I got a x minus h plus k. So I'm just comparing. Here's h, here's k. So that's going to tell me that I have a vertex of 1, 1. Watch out for the opposite sign. So it's minus and minus was in the formula. So my vertex is now at one, one. So I basically moved the graph to the right one because of H and I moved it up one because of K. Okay, check out the A value. There's a number there, it's negative one. So that means it's gonna open down and it's actually gonna stay the same because one isn't bigger than one. It's not less than one. So here is my canned set of numbers for the absolute value of 
function, I'm actually going to add a third column. Because a was something different than 1, it was negative 1, I'm going to take all of my absolute value numbers that I got, and I'm going to multiply them by negative 1. So negative 2, negative 1, 0, negative 1, and negative 2. And I'm going to replace that middle column. So now my ordered pair would be negative 2, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 1. But make sure you take these ordered pairs and plot from your vertex. So here's my vertex. I'm going to go to the left 2, and I'm going to go down 2. To the left 1, down 1. To the right 1, down 1. To the left 2, the right 2, down 2. And there is my V that opens down, isn't narrower or wider. And compared to the absolute value function that we graphed up here above, it got moved to the left one unit and to the right one unit. Okay, domain, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, basically asking, is there any number that I can't take the absolute value of? And that's no. So X is gonna be, you see me write this double lined R. This means all real numbers, just a shortcut way of writing that. Um, your range is now gonna flip flop and your movement of up one makes it less than or equal to one. You can actually tell the range by the movement. You know, what happened with this A value is gonna kind of dictate, along with the K value, what my range is gonna be. But X goes with domain, range goes with Ys. Okay, so let's try that again. A little bit different movement here, but here's your A, X minus H plus K. Okay, so h, right, minus is from the formula, but h is equal to 2. k was plus k, but now it's a minus 3, so negative 3. There's your vertex. So what used to be at 0, 0 for the vertex goes over 2 and down 3. And that means that we're going to move to the right 2 units, and we're going to go down 3. Okay, look at the a value 4, it's positive, so it's going to open up. And because it's 4 is bigger than 1, it's going to be narrower. Because here are my original absolute value numbers again. Not 1, 2, and 2. But now because a is 4, maybe I'll do that here in red, a different color. I'm going to go through and I'm going to multiply all of those absolute value numbers. That's 4, so 8, 4, 0, 4, and 8. So go over to the left and go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There we go. Over 1, up 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, there we go. There we go. And there is my absolute value graph. Okay. Notice how it got squeezed together. Again, my domain is going to be all real numbers again because I don't have to worry about that with... Um, there basically is absolute value going to have any sort of restrictions? No. So it's all real numbers. My range is y is greater than or equal to again because now it's opening up. And it's actually that number that belongs right there. Okay. So hopefully domain and range comes along here as we keep on going with these functions because that's something we're going to focus on quite a bit throughout the rest of the year. All right, so one more. And why another one? Because I want to show you what happens when we run into a plus 3. These both have minuses or they both need minuses. So i got to rewrite the plus 3 as minus a negative number. And that's how you get an h value that's negative. Okay, just like the k value. So there's your vertex. So now finally we got one that moves to the left three and down one. A is positive, so it's up, but because one third is less than one, it's gonna be wider than our typical graph. So go over negative three, down one, and there's the vertex. Make my table, um, so negative two, 
1-2-1-0-0-1-1-2-2. But now we are going to make that third column and we're going to multiply those all by one third because that's your value of A. So two thirds, one third, zero, one third, and two thirds. Now what's going to make it happen or what's going to happen here is now when we go over two, now I'm going to over just a little bit, over one just a little bit more get a sorry that's not very straight pretty wide look of a V all roll numbers again for domain uh, and now your range is still going Y is greater than or equal to because it's going up and again that K value is the like bottom number for your range uh, there's graphing uh, again domain range hopefully helps out I know it's a different way to do it we're not gonna plug values in here for X and Y just randomly we're going to stick with our parent function and adjust those as we needed to.